Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Short Explanations Podcast. This is episode 16. My name is Hiam. Tom is over there. Ah. Again. And on the live stream, he's over there. So, as you know, we are now, we, we moved kind of, sort of, to YouTube for the live stream, so you can get it there. Just some house cleaning. What I do is um, I, I will, it'll be up there, but I will then download it, delete it, and then repost it. Because live streams and regular episodes, even though they're the same, they go in different spots. And I think it's too hard to tell our, to tell people like, hey, if you want to see our weekly episode, go to the live section and watch last week's live stream. It doesn't work that way. So for while I cut that out, it'll be live on the live streams and then the following week, whatever. But anyway, just more house cleaning. Again, subscribe. You can watch us there or subscribe or join our signal group and you will know when we go live or any other time or if you just have questions. And it's free. We're not asking for anything for it. So this week, we're going to go, I, I don't know if this is called the start of security, but it's called CIA. And before we say anything, it's not that CIA. So if you're learning any formal security, the first thing people talk about is not just backing up and all the stuff we've spoken about, but it's called CIA. And that really stands for three things, confidentiality integrity and accessibility and i'm gonna say and i maybe say this wrong is that this is when you're going into like a corporate type situation or you're tr or you have an organization these are the three important things that all the security is based upon i'm gonna ask tom if i got that right almost you said accessibility okay. the a is availability availability okay so kind of close it it almost means the same thing in this context, but uh, availability is going to be your multiple choice test answer. Availability. Okay, I fixed that. And I should know this because I teach this, but <laughs> but anyway, it's it's the idea that, so let's start, we're, let's break down each one of the, the letters. So the first one, and this is going to be a shorter show, but the idea is there, is confidentiality. And this is the idea that you want to keep your secrets secret, right? There, done. Secrets are secrets. Easy. How, how you keep those secrets secret is the hard part. That's that's what we've been talking about. Use Signal, okay? Use a VPN, uh, sh sh uh, limit the, your, your access, all the Active Directory stuff, all the things that we pay a lot of money to keep things safe and, and secret. That's what we're doing. Uh, yeah, confidentiality, is, it's quite literally, it's as easy as it sounds. And a, a lot of these are going to be deceptively easy to kind of explain or basically just get the, the barest introduction to the topic on. But yeah, confidentiality is exactly that. It's the stuff you want to keep secret. Make sure that it stays secret. Like if your product or if your company is working on some super secret product launch thing and no one needs to know that you're totally going to upend the entire uh, fast food industry? I don't know. I've got food on the brain. Um, but like, you know, if you're about to launch something crazy and, and nobody can know what's going on and no one can know what market segments you're, you're you know, targeting and, and stuff like that, then yeah, confidential ideas should be confidential. Uh, the tools and methods you use to get there are going to vary widely based on your threat model, your budget, what kinds of things you're trying to keep secret, what data types you're trying to keep secret, you know, who are you trying to keep it secret from, all those great classic threat modeling questions are going to go into each of these. So uh, even though like this stuff sounds easy on the surface, don't just think, you know, oh, I can't believe that company had a breach. Don't they know confidentiality, integrity, and availability? And how could they mess that up? It's so easy. It's actually really easy to mess this stuff up. So, you know, have have a little bit of, a, a little bit of grace. It's the, it's, programming your key cards in the morning so people have the right door access. I mean, programming your server so you have the right logins. Programming your, your backup scenarios that only the right people have them. When you let somebody go or when you onboard, what access do they have? It's, it's the, it's, it's what you forget. It's the, you let someone go on Friday afternoon and you didn't, and 
they have a USB key stuck at the bottom of their pocket with all the company secrets. It's one of those, I mean, all of that, everything that we've spoken of, it's, it's all of that. Like literally when you fire someone, there's a reason security goes to their desk and moves their stuff. So they don't have time to remove it. It's not because they're hardened. We you want to embarrass the person. It's you literally don't want any potential secrets leaving with the company. The good news is, for me, I don't necessarily have to worry about that, but I do know people who have, and and it's one of those types of things. Uh, and, you know, in that example, you could also encounter issues with, uh, you know, that potentially uh, vindictive ex-employee compromising your integrity and availability as well. So to, to jump into integrity, it's basically... Make sure that your data remains in your control. Make sure that your data says and does the things that you want it to say and do. Uh, so let's take let's take a really overwrought example, right? Let's say you've got some financial documents, um, and then uh, hackers get in right before you make these things public because you're a public company and decide to change all the numbers and stuff to make you look really bad and awful. Well, that's a compromise of integrity. Um, right. It's uh, basically taking your data and misrepresenting it or getting it to say something you don't mean it to say um, or, you know, making whatever that system is uh, even uh, unreliable or inauthentic. Uh, and that that touches a little bit on on availability. Um, but, you know, effectively, uh, imagine and we've seen this a lot before. Uh, where where hackers will target a public-facing website and deface it, right? Well, now that public-facing website for whatever company just got hacked, well, that information doesn't necessarily have integrity, right? Uh, the, the new stuff that the hackers posted, uh, you know, it could be just an easy defacement of, you know, this company's terrible, et cetera, um, and with a bunch of name-calling, or they could change things subtly and wait for people to catch on or wait for that information to become dispersed, right? Um, you know, any kind of like website defacement would fall under this integrity umbrella. Um, and uh, again, this isn't the end all be all of security talks. Uh, this is quite literally just your introduction and it provides you helpful buckets and kind of where to think about these concepts and where to place them. Uh, it's certainly not the only way you can think about security or the only way to think about beginning. And it's absolutely not the last or the most in depth. Right. Uh, this is just kind of a helpful framework to allow you to organize your thoughts more on what you're protecting, what you're defending against, and the kind of things you have to worry about. Are backups part of integrity? Making sure the backups work? Um, yeah. So backups I would classify under integrity and availability. Now, obviously, there's some confidentiality there, too, because you don't want your backups just flying in the wind. Uh, now, when uh, somebody who runs ransomware decides to take all of your data, you know, slurp it over to their servers, uh, encrypt all your stuff, you just got a surprise backup. So, you know, it's it's not a data breach, it's a surprise backup. Totally different thing. Um, and uh, uh, for those of you with uh, lesser functioning sarcasm detectors, yes, that was total sarcasm. But yeah, backups have integrity, they have availability, right? You don't want to restore from a backup just to figure out a, you know, the, the easiest option is backups just don't work, right? Something got corrupted somewhere, your backup system hasn't been functioning forever, like, clearly your data doesn't have the integrity you need, right? Um, but then uh, the more, like, surreptitious and sneaky answer is, hey, what if you restore a file, but it's not actually the original you're restoring, you're restoring a, a modified copy that somebody made changes to for whatever reason. Um, that would also be a compromise of integrity. Uh, the main purpose of backups, though, uh, which is a great segue, uh, is to maintain your data availability, right? And availability is quite literally just making sure that the stuff that you or your business or your company needs to access remains accessible. Um, so this, the form of backups, right? If, so, if a hard drive dies or a system goes down, you know, what do you have to step in to start doing that job or serving that data in the interim? Right? How fast can you get a replacement online? Is there a, a standby system? Do you have spare capacity in the back that you just bring forward and plop down in the server? Right? How does your stuff work? And 
I, trying to think about that, you know, when something goes wrong, how do you get back to normal is kind of the core piece of availability, right? How do we have a restoration of service? Uh, this can also cover things like active attacks, like denial or distributed denial of a, of service attacks, right? If hackers are slamming you with, you know, terabits of traffic over and over again and basically making it so no one can load your web pages, well, guess what? They just hurt your availability. The, the website that you're trying to keep online for your customers to use or whoever uh, is now inaccessible and now not available because of the attack, right? So availability is everything to do with, you know, making sure not only do your datas and servers function the way you want them to, right? They're not getting crypto ransomware. They're not getting knocked offline. There's not uh, some vulnerability that uh, takes down your web hosting. Um, but it's also doing, you know, the network and preventative thing. It's like, you know, rate limiting or uh, backup or uh, hot spares or availability concerns or other other ways of making sure that your stuff stays running, even if everything is catching on fire. And there's no fourth bullet there, but there's probably regulations that all that, that all of this falls under. It's it's nobody talks about or it's compliance with HIPAA or GDPR or whatever it is. And that would be under confidentiality, but still it's still, it's it involves all three. And I wish there was a fourth one, but that would screw up the whole acronym of regulations because you want some sort of regulation to make sure all of this. My favorite story is when we were talking about this is like you were saying disaster recovery. And I saw some PowerPoint slide of, of what do you have? Do you just have backups? Like your entire where everything got burned down, burned to the ground, you have nothing, you have some cloud backups. Next time, do you set up a second warehouse with literally everything and working computers and everything that you can move over? Clearly that's super expensive because you're running two offices and two everything in parallel on the off chance, but you're up and running within the literal time it takes to move over to the next office. Or do you do a hybrid approach in there and how far do you go? It's one of those tabletop scenarios. And and so we discussed that. But after doing after teaching this uh, many times, I start realizing why all of this is important because all three of these things is what we're trying to accomplish. And some of you, some some people focus on one versus the other, but in reality, you gotta do all three at all times. Yeah, so there are there are lots of companies out there, and and you see this a lot when whatever DDoS attack hit the news, right? Uh, where a company is hacked, but it's not necessarily that they lost their data or things are changed or defaced or uh, or stuff is leaked or anything like that. Sometimes it's quite literally, oh yeah, that company is under attack and they just they got knocked off for a period of hours or days, however long the attack lasts, right? And that is just as important as the other two, right? You you can kind of balance these the way you want, but ultimately you got to have all three to make a functioning service business company, et cetera, right? Uh, so if you're trying to, if you're running in like e-commerce shop, like Amazon, right? And you're trying to sell stuff online. Well, if your website doesn't work because somebody has attacked it or is actively attacking it, you're, still not making any money so clearly that attack is effective you have to think about all of these things in concept. so if i had a blue check mark i'm thinking of a blue check mark or a purple check mark or a gray whatever color check mark fits your bow it doesn't matter so that was integrity right because yep. that was identifying but then it turns out if you pay some I don't know, some number between six and nine dollars or seven and nine dollars. Now, now you lose the integrity. I don't know. I'm it just thinking does, about this. Like, if you were to have a theoretical system where certain users on a platform that you run uh, went through the effort of getting actually verified and, you know, they're, they're a known person, either a government entity or someone famous or a, a reporter for a prestigious news organization. They worked really hard to prove themselves and establish, let's just call them green check marks of validation that the service itself said, yeah, this is this person. This is John Smith, the reporter from the news. Um, and then all of a sudden 
seemingly overnight, like let's say the company got bought by some outrageous billionaire or something, right? If that outrageous billionaire then said, okay, well, anyone can be verified for $7.99, for example, right, per month, uh, then yeah, that would be watering down the integrity of what that checkmark means on your platform. It basically means that any crazy person with seven ninety nine and uh, thirty days in a dream uh, could be seen on the same level as these other actually verified people, uh, and it, it would basically mean a complete breakdown of what that checkmark system even stood for in the first place. Ultimately, yep. it's our job to just ignore those. Now, what happens if you rate limit? So, if you don't pay your seven ninety nine. You can only read, I don't know, 600, 610, 300, 800, whatevers. But if you pay, I don't know, you get all of them. I feel like that's, that's, that's the limit. That's the problem with availability because you are limiting people from, re from reading your website unless you pay. It could be an issue of availability, but... Honestly, the more pressing thing is it's actually an issue of a business model that just isn't well thought of. Yeah. So let's say you, you are doing one of these companies, and the typical way you would run a business like this is uh, you would have, uh, you know, ads interspersed with your company, right? So as people scroll through, they would encounter, you know, actual organic content and then like an advertisement every so often. Um, if you are preventing any user, you know, paid check mark or not from accessing your content well they're also going to be prevented from accessing your advert which is where your actual money comes from. uh so this just seems like a business model that isn't well thought out at all now is it an availability hit sure but it's kind of self-inflicted and uh honestly as a business sometimes you want those kind of self-inflicted availability hits if you've made deep cuts to your infrastructure and just can't handle the amount of users it's I know this is this is not this a security example that we're talking about, but again, I think this transcends all business models. Obviously, you want your business to keep secrets secret. You don't want your competitors to know things. You want to make sure that whatever you're talking with your clients stay with your clients and don't get out. You want to make sure that you you keep your word and people believe your word. And you want I don't know I don't have a good example for available, but you want to be available. You want people to know that you're there for them and you're not gonna just pick up and disappear at the end so with it doesn't necessarily have to be a security idea but these three things transcend i think the 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 entire business model of just about everything but when we talk about security that's what we're talking about these three things in particular yeah so again it's not it's not the end all be all kind of you've learned this one thing and now you're super secure for the rest of your life but it is a good thought exercise in thinking about, uh, especially this problem space and solutions that apply to this space, right? If some company wants to sell you a blinky box that'll totally 100% protect your business from all hackers, or if you just listen to that YouTuber and pay the $5.99 for Bob VPN, then your data is protected forever. Um, just run through the top three, right? Does How does this project or how does this product help my confidentiality? How does it maintain integrity? How does it keep things available? And if if you can answer all of those, you know, pretty resoundingly, it might not be total bunk that you're buying. Uh, but if you just listen to the marketing hype and buy anything that comes your way without doing any kind of critical analysis, you're just wasting money. Um, and you don't want to do that. So it's a helpful starting place, certainly not an end point, um, but it's it's a good way to start marching through these questions and doing a little bit of deeper thinking on whatever it is you're trying to protect or make a purchasing decision on. Okay. I got nothing else. I think that's, that's it. it for me. Okay. So let's just finish up with housekeeping. Again, we have a signal group. Follow us on signal. We're there. Uh, I don't know which uh, short service uh, messaging model we're on. We're on all of them, or we're starting to be on all of them. Uh, look for me. Look for the podcast, whatever it is. But I think that's it. I think the best thing to do is follow our sig uh, join our signal and ask all these questions. We're there for you. With that said, I think we'll not. I want to say we'll see you next week, but we'll see. 
we'll see you eventually. Uh, and that's that's some availability with integrity. Okay, everyone, have a good night. See y'all.